what's up beautiful people it's your boy judio and i'm back again with a new video today we're going to be checking out a video by awaken with jp this one is titled the most traumatizing events from 2022 i like watching this roundup so i'm excited for it without wasting your time let's get to it it's never been good that sums up 2022 pretty well <laughs> Good You're evening right and welcome to our year in review special report. Mm -hmm. 2022 was the year that we normalized drag shows for kids. We're making our ancestors proud. As we complete year <laughs> yeah. three of the first 15 days to slow the spread, 2022 has been the incestuous birth child of mother corruption and her brother gaslighting. It's been a magnificent <laughs> year thanks to our <laughs> benevolent globalist leaders that sign my Is paycheck while things? enriching your life with premium levels of inflation Unifying levels of division, satiating levels of food shortages. Unifying level of division. Hmm. Shortages and a securely wide open border. We'll also fondly remember 2022 as the year that young people started dying suddenly from a condition known as died suddenly. So tonight we're gonna take a nostalgic <laughs> walk down memory lane to re-traumatize you with the top stories from 2022. The year started with a frog sitting in a pot of hot water on the stove. Where did the frog end up? Stay tuned to find out. January 2022 started off with a bang when the FDA humbly asked for a quick turnaround of just 75 years to reveal their safety data on the Pfizer product. A reasonable time frame to request given that they already had the data and therefore could reveal it immediately, but 75 years would be a better option that fits the flow of the science fiction narrative we've all enjoyed acclimating to. Though conspiratorial eyebrows were raised from the 75 year request, unfortunately a judge not controlled by Bill Gates or George Soros, gave them just eight months. The since revealed data on its safety <laughs> a judge not, that was very sarcastic. and effectiveness showed no correlation to safety or effectiveness. January was also the month that tens of thousands of freedom lovers gathered in Washington, D.C. to march against the mandates. Unifying over the principles of freedom, the dangerous fascists had their voices heard because we could not censor them. And most unfortunate about the March Against the Mandates, not even one of the freedom lovers was framed and thrown in prison as a political prisoner, as apparently the FBI was too busy to attend the event. January also saw the monumental <laughs> launch of the Canadian Truckers Freedom Convoy, also protesting the mandates. The Freedom Convoy brought out the best leadership qualities of dictator Trudeau, seeing him try to dictator. starve the protesters, freeze their bank accounts, intimidate them, and rob them of their own donation money. Facing the national threat of citizens standing up for their freedom, Trudeau rose to the occasion by going into hiding, breaking old laws, and inventing new laws in order to assert the control that the World Economic Forum... I'm confused. This guy is confusing my head. Is he reading these things or this is a freestyle? Because if this is a freestyle, he should start writing music. Trudeau rose to the occasion by hiding himself. <laughs> That's a punchline right there. I promise you it is. Handsome too. I think we all stand in admiration of how Trudeau made his father Castro proud. And January closed out with the Joe Rogan Spotify controversy that started from Rogan having guests on his show like doctors that said things that turned out to be objectively sure. true and therefore were irrefutable misinformation. And to put the nail in Rogan's coffin, Neil Young left Spotify. And now, nearly a year later, the results of Young's power move are in. Nobody gave a shit, and Rogan's now stronger than ever. We hope Joe <laughs> finally learned his lesson. February then said to the world, Happy Valentine's Day, and fuck you, let's start World War III, as Russia invaded Ukraine. Mm -hmm. For a refresher on the nuanced details of this invasion, let's revisit Kamala Harris's breakdown. So, Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So basically that's wrong. A true wartime leader. The Russia-Ukraine <laughs> invasion also gave birth to the year's oh most God. popular virtue signal. I stand with Ukraine. Kneel for the national anthem, but stand with Ukraine. It'd be great if we could somehow verify. I'm not saying anything, no comments. Verify if China's subversive indoctrination strategies to weaken America are working. 
but I guess we'll never know. Nonetheless, never shy on a good we virtue went. signal, we saw the LGBTQ community adopt the Ukrainian colors into their pride flag. Joke was on them, because Ukraine despises their community as they've banned gay marriage. And the joke continues to be on the alphabet soup community as they still haven't realized it yet. And in March, we saw history being made by trans swimmer Leah Thomas, who became the first woman who is a man to win the women's NCAA championship. Truly an empowering moment for women as they learn they have a rightful place in- Are these all facts, guys? Like. I know some of the stories, I don't know the other ones, but please feel free to confirm to me that these are all facts, because we don't do speculations around here. Sports. Unless a man wants to take their opportunity from them. In the name of women's rights, long live the patriarchy. And who could forget <laughs> the slap heard around the world when at the Oscars, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock harder than Leah's penis slaps against her leg on the way to the pool. And being the principal people that they are, the that? Hollywood elites then proceeded to give Will Smith a standing ovation when he won an award later that night. And March was also the month that DeSantis signed the dreaded Don't Say Gay Bill. Reading the finer print of the bill, it turns out it does allow you to say gay, be gay, but it does not allow you to sexualize young school children if you're a teacher. But not reading the finer print, which we don't do, the bill means that DeSantis hates the gays. And shockingly, there was outrage for a change. The Babylon Bee summarized it pretty well when they said, teachers who insist they're not teaching your kids about sex also weirdly outraged by ban on teaching your kids about sex. In the top story from April, <laughs> a federal summary. judge ruled that Biden's air travel mask mandate is illegal, and accordingly, the mask mandate was dropped immediately. As passengers began raw-dogging the air with their bare-ass faces, the devastating <laughs> results on public health were that death and disease did not rise, but people's happiness did. In our eyes, both terrible results. In May, we said goodbye to Lucifer's sister who was working as the White House press secretary, Jen Paisecki. With a Hillary Clinton level of likability, Paisecki was replaced by Karine Jean-Pierre, who specializes in being diversity. Through hard work and dedication to doing her job well, the sequel to Jen Paisecki has since proven to be just as likable, but even more Pinocchio-like than Jen. However, the misogynists of this nation, which includes all men, have been delighted because Karine Jean-Pierre is at least a lot better looking than Paisecki and her hideous red hair. And June started off with a bang as the documentary, What is- <laughs> This is quite intense though. Don't you guys think so? Don't you think this is just a little bit intense? <laughs> a woman was released. This Much dangerously worse. hateful film single-handedly eliminated all the safe space in the world as it posed common sense questions to people with no common sense. Though no one with blue hair has figured out what a woman is since, everyone else erroneously believes it is simply an adult female. And accordingly, later in the month, everyone history was believe. made when the George Soros-backed Judge Katanji Jackson became the first black woman sworn into the Supreme Court who doesn't know what a woman is. This event helped us learn that the three most important qualifications for being hired by the Biden administration are not knowing what a woman is, not knowing what the Constitution is, and not knowing where Epstein's client list is. Speaking of which... <laughs> oh, Biden lovers are not going to like this. Oh my goodness. I'm not a politician, guys. I always say I'm not involved with any kind of politics. But if something is wrong, I'm just going to say it's wrong. I use my common sense. I'm not a professional, but I'm just saying I don't think Biden lovers are going to like this. June saw Ghislaine Maxwell become the first person ever convicted of trafficking minors to literally no one, apparently. We at the media, <laughs> along with our sponsors, appreciate her keeping her mouth shut so we can continue protecting the guilty from the innocent. And June closed out with a tremendous performance from President Biden, complete with shaking hands with air, shaking hands with air again, getting lost on stage, calling on a dead congresswoman, getting lost on stage again, shaking hands with even more air, and then celebrating a job well done by spiking himself like a football right into the ground as he fell off his bike. And not much happened in July. That really happened? Just the Dutch farmers Never started a massive protest because they still want to be able to grow what's called food. These fascist farmers chose to resist the Green New Deal orchestrated by the World Economic Forum that wants to shut down their farms because scientifically speaking, 
Starvation helps fight climate change. Well, farmers, <laughs> guess who's getting a poor social credit? Right. You know, we don't need farms. We need the climate. You know, so we need to. This is utilitarianism. We need the climate more than we need food. Credit score. Little do the farmers evil. know, Santa Claus Schwab is always watching and he's making a list and he's checking it twice. And we'll just skip Independence Day because it hurts our cause. And in July, we also <laughs> declared monkeypox an emergency. But unfortunately, no one gave a shit about the boy crying wolf this time. But through great scientific investigation, <laughs> it was discovered that 95% of monkeypox cases were coming from gay orgies. The gay community responded really? by continuing to have gay orgies. Though the recommended guidelines of having sex with no more than 15 people at a time continue to be in place. July also saw a conspiratorial ginger appear on Tucker Carlson. Gingers definitely don't have souls. Right, Jen? We'll no, they do I don't recognize that ginger at all. You directly. Yeah, just let me know when you figure it out. Moving on to August. August saw our national security take a big step forward in reducing the security of our nation when the FBI raided Trump at Mar-a-Lago. After the FBI agents were done sniffing Melania's underwear, masturbating in the Trump socks, and giving each other hand jobs while admiring each other's mustaches, the nation had more peace knowing that the weaponized federal agency was protecting us from domestic patriots. And in September, as summer was winding down, the heat was elevating in Iran when the ruling regime killed a young lady for not wearing her face covering properly for her protection. Fauci <laughs> reportedly experienced... Okay, I'm sorry, that was not funny, but... <laughs> His, his punchline, the way he delivers, made it really funny. I apologize, that was not funny. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> but he said he killed, or she was killed for her protection. <laughs> you see, this is the world we've, we've circled into, like I always say. This is the logic that is coming into the world now. It's like he was speaking about um, assisted suicide, where you're going to be killed for your own good. Basically, I'll help you kill you to fix the root cause of your disease or I don't know. I haven't read about it and I'm not going to read about it. He made me or he introduced me to the topic. So it's just the same thing. Experienced unprecedented levels of envy, given that he's never received the green light to directly kill people for not wearing their face coverings correctly. But in Iran, the events sparked off never before seen protests against the authoritarian regime. But in the name of preserving democracy, the regime responded to the protesters by sentencing over 15,000 of them to death. With regard to the atrocities, really? liberals in the US wisely comforted each other by reminding themselves something like that could never happen here. This just in! Believing that could never happen here Sentence is exactly what death, it takes for something 000. like that to happen here. And that's exactly what we want, so please keep believing that. Later in September, the nation then enjoyed the lovely fall colors of deep blood red and black that were on display at Hunter's Dad's speech in Philadelphia. You probably remember it as a deeply unifying speech where Biden labeled half the country as dangerous extremists who threaten our democracy. September also saw the passing of Queen Elizabeth, along with DeSantis passing illegal immigrants into the open, loving, accepting arms of compassionate liberals in Martha's Vineyard, who then, in the name of equity, immediately ejected the immigrants out of there as fast as they possibly could. In October, the deep state got spooked when Italy elected Georgia Maloney. To celebrate the first female prime minister being elected, we at the media ran a women's empowerment campaign smearing her as a far-right fascist out to destroy democracy. We've labeled a lot right of the inconvenient things yeah. as a threat to our democracy this year. Do you think people are still buying it? No. Well, then we should probably keep doing it. <laughs> Meanwhile, while testifying before the European Parliament, a Pfizer executive admitted that they never tested to see if their product stops transmission. And of course, that's just paperwork, so who cares? And on October 28th, in an obvious attempt to destroy democracy, in, guys. being honest this time, Elon Musk purchased Twitter in an effort to save free speech. Men with too little testosterone and women with too much armpit hair had to shelter in place due to the trauma of it. To this day, they continue sheltering in place, 
pacified in the coffin of their comfort zone, just like they're supposed to be doing. And November was a big month, as Sam Beckman fried took a break from his penthouse nerd orgies so he could get caught in the second biggest Ponzi scheme in US history with FTX collapsing. In doing so, FTX took a bit of a market plunge going from $32 billion down to $0. A bit. Now is probably a good time to buy. You yeah. always want to buy at the dip. And the biggest Ponzi... <laughs> You know what's crazy? That's actually true. But he walks with a punchline. <laughs> oh my god, I love this guy. I wanna meet him. I wanna meet him. I wanna meet JP now. I really wanna meet him. I'm going, I'm going crazy. <laughs> His scheme on record continues to be the Federal Reserve. In the November midterms, the expected red wave turned out to be just mild spotting in the underpants. Dangerous Republicans missed out on taking the Senate majority, but did win the majority in Congress. The big wins for the Democrats were Maricopa County doing what Maricopa County does. And also in Pennsylvania, the first ever tumor having sex with a hoodie was elected to the Senate. Though he's taken unfair criticism from red voting extremists saying he doesn't have a brain, let the record show that Fetterman does have a brain. He just can't use it. And in December, Christmas came early for all 11 WNBA fans when Brittany Griner was released from Russian prison in exchange for a notorious Russian arms dealer known as the Merchant of Death. The trade turned out to be kind of like the FTX of human trading. Very valuable. <laughs> Though Griner is better at... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just had to love a care. I've been trying to hold it, I can't. <laughs> Basketball than the Merchant of Death, she is not as good at selling weapons to foreign nations that want to kill Americans. In this trade, Never Leave a Man Behind Biden decided to leave a Marine behind in Russian prison so that Greiner could come back to America so she could have the opportunity to not stand for the national anthem once again. But there was a somber note in December. The American dream came to an end for the entire three people who actually thought the liver king was all natural when it was exposed that he is in steroids. fact on steroids. Him being on steroids and looking like he's on steroids were impossible clues for these people to see until he was exposed. Our condolences to anyone who actually gives a shit. But it wasn't all somber in December. On an uplifting note, Canada began heavily pushing a breakthrough medical treatment called Assisted Medical Assistance in Dying. It's where instead of helping you, they kill you. Trudeau's father couldn't be more proud as he burns in hell. And finally, Brittany Griner wasn't the only thing released in December. In the most noteworthy story of the year, Elon started releasing what are known as the Twitter files. Government-sponsored censorship, the FBI's involvement, shadow banning and deplatforming conservatives, covering up Hunter Biden's laptop, mm -hmm. hiding truth about Oh. Yeah, well, we've worked really hard not to cover any of the bombshell truth that's come to light, and we'll continue working hard to avoid covering the biggest story of the year. Why? This distraction, uh, that is a that is a full of uh, old news. Exactly. The truth is just a <laughs> distraction from the narrative. We couldn't agree right. more. Yeah. Now, let me continue narrating to you. In closing, what happened to the frogs that started the year sitting in pots of heating water on the stove? Cooked well, down. a few frogs remain comfortably in the boiling water, but unfortunately 2022 saw many of the frogs realize what was happening and jump out. So in 2023, we'll be thoroughly dedicated to coaxing them right back into the pot from which they came. How will we do that? Well, can you say climate crisis? As we say goodbye to 2022, we also say good riddance to the 112 food processing plants that were destroyed by mysterious fires and explosions throughout the year. I wonder what happened. And we know that you know that- What actually happened? That's serious, 112. That history will repeat itself unless lessons are learned. So be sure to forget all the valuable lessons learned during 2022 so we can repeat the same tactics on you next year. Mm -hmm. We'll keep doing the same thing over and over again while getting you to expect a different result. Because that's how we work. That's it for tonight's news. We appreciate you tuning in all year and thank you for being ignorant enough to turn to us as your trusted news source. We wish you a happy propagandist you, new year and we'll see keep you in hell. Good night. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness, JP. I'm definitely going to put the link to his channel in the description. I always do. Any video you see on the channel, check the description. You're going to see the links to the, to the author's channel. But that was crazy. Like all these things happened in 2022. And everything seems like madness. It seems like an extreme you should be watching in movies. But they actually might have, let me say might have happened because I, I haven't heard some of it, but I've heard some. Isn't it crazy? That's the world we're living in. These things that, let's say 10 years ago, even five years ago, if, you, if someone told you about most of the occurrences, the things that are normal now, and someone told you about it, you just be like, come on, man. Like, it's, you're, you're not even going to argue with it because it's going to sound very stupid to you. But it's actually happening. And this is not just happening. It's becoming the logic. It's becoming the thought process. Like, it's enforced to be the norm. If you fight or push back against it, then... You're the one who is not moral. Anyways, <laughs> that was crazy. He made it easy to accept. He made it amusing, made it um, fun to watch, but it's serious. This is serious. This is not, this is no joke. Um, I saw in a YouTube tag where they call his, his um, videos conservative comedy. I'll call it common sense comedy. Like, because I feel like, when you try to add like conservative, liberal or right winger and left winger, when you try to add a tag like that to this kind of conversation, it makes it feel political. But in 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 normality, it should be common sense. Like I'm not from America. I'm Nigerian. This thing has nothing to do with politics to me. This it should be common sense that we do things right, you know? Like, you should just, we should just know how to do things right by how we are trained, how we are built. Because every standard we set for ourselves is meant to regulate us. It's not meant to scatter or deplete us. It's meant to regulate us. So if common sense in a society becomes not common, then it's a broken society. It's a problem. This is not about political um, um, associa associations. It's not about that. It's about us. It's about our reality. Anyways, let me not talk too much. Let me know your thoughts on that video. If you want us to bring more, feel free to let me know in the comment section. But yes, please share your thoughts on that video. I had a good time watching that. I had a very good time. I sat through 17 minutes watching that and I didn't feel bored at all. He makes very, very good content. I must commend him and I always do. That being said, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Have a wonderful day. Peace.